Kid, seriously. Welcome to the recuperating version of the Kid Seriously Show. We're the only podcast around that always takes chewable vitamin C tablets and uses aloe vera liberally. Every now and again, we get together to discuss the world. We play our famous trivia question game show, discuss other things from Nerdland that might tickle our fancy, and once in a while, we review a trailer. To my left, it's everyone's favorite orange slice king. It's Luke Neitzel. And me, it's the Magoo himself. It's Maya Madrid. Luke! How you doing, buddy? Good. You know, all my years of youth soccer, I never got orange slices at a game. I refuse to believe that. I, I don't. I don't recall a single instance of it. I think we just we just got water and Gatorade, like most other sports. But I, I don't have a problem with it. So normally, I, I give a youth sports recap because that seems to be what my life is. But I'm having the epitome of like uh, first world problem type deal today because. My partner and I are taking a really big vacation, like the biggest vacation we've ever taken in our 17 years together in May, and it's the longest I'll ever be on an airplane. So I was trying to think of ways to occupy myself on the plane because planes are, I get super bored on planes. I can't sleep on them. Even when you and I went to Europe, I took a bunch of NyQuil and I still couldn't sleep. I was just kind of a zombie stuck there. NyQuil was good, wasn't it? Yeah, it, you know, like I was like, come on, I just want to sleep, and it, and it didn't work. So I, they had a sale on Amazon. I bought a Kindle 7 for $35 that came, and I'm like, okay, I'm going to load this up with stuff. What could I load it up with? And I got all excited because I grew up a Marvel kid, but ever since my son got into the Justice League, I've been kind of a big DC guy, and I've always loved Green Lantern, so I've been really into that. And they have this streaming service called DC Universe, and it's pretty cool. They just announced that they're putting basically every comic they have on the subscription. They have all the animated movies, and that's the one thing DC's really good at is animated movies. Plus, they have the Nolan stuff, the Christopher Reeves stuff, the Tim Burton stuff. So there's a lot to pick from. And even I like to kind of hate watch Batman versus Superman or Suicide Squad or some of that other shitty stuff. <laughs> exactly. Plus, I love... Uh, Aquaman, as we all know, Wonder Woman might be Wonder Woman's in my top three comic book movies. I love that movie. So I was just like, this is great. Like I can subscribe to this. So I looked into it and you get the first month for 80 cents. And then after that, it goes to like eight bucks a month or something, which still isn't bad, but I could just cancel it. Right. So I could sign up in May. I'm all excited. I look on their website. They announced how they've partnered with, you know, Amazon and Fire TV and all these other things. They haven't launched an actual app to go on Kindle Fires. Yeah. So my life is ruined. I'm going to have to find, you know, a Netflix show or God forbid, I actually don't watch all of Sabrina, which is coming back this week. I mean, I mean, like, do I have, you know, do I, do I wait a month to watch Sabrina? Can I hold out a month to watch Sabrina? Oh, it's, no. I just, it's like, how do people even keep going in this world today? I understand your play. I do want to say that the DC comics uh, thing is absolutely wonderful. I just actually canceled Marvel Unlimited, which I really enjoyed. Um, but DC comics, <laughs> like that would be awesome to get. And if I ever get back into comics, I'm going to get them both because I, I love so many of the Flash uh, comic runs and I loved a lot of the old Batman comics and there's a lot of Superman that I love and there's so many great stories and I definitely think it's well worth it sorry that they don't have an app yet Marvel Unlimited was like that too where it was a little fishy to to kind of get the stuff at first but that will be coming and uh, there will be lots of stuff and lots of recommendations that I have for you for uh, for you know normally if you would have had to go out and purchase it or heaven forbid get it from the library uh, that's way too much effort, but now that'll just be yours. I can be like, oh yeah, read this Jeff Johns run on Wally West Flash in 2000, whatever. Well, and that's the oh. thing. There's like a lot of cool stories I've heard about, but I'm not going to spend $35 on the trade paperback. Like Batman Hush. Like I don't, I've never read that, but I've heard about it or the long Halloween. Like I want to read those things, but I just yeah, don't want to spend $35 on it so I've never done it so I'm like this is the way in so I may just end up doing it anyway and doing it on my my laptop and not when I'm on this plane or whatever but man if it could just be on the Kindle app it would have been so convenient and, and, and when, when are you guys going on your trip? May 8th we leave oh that's a great, uh, that's a great day um, that's a great day to go great time to go well you know I, I thought what better way to celebrate my best friend and partner in crime than to go as far away from him as possible 
No, that's yeah, that's I mean, I ditto, buddy. Ditto. Um, <laughs> we all win. <laughs> meanwhile, I'm packing to get to move away from you. Um, yeah, it's uh, I mean, you, you mentioned Batman Hush, I love that so much. Um, Long Halloween, I actually like better than uh, the, the Dark Knight uh, Returns, which your brother just got an original copy of, which was was exciting. He sent us that news, but then I had loved Dark Knight Returns, but like I thought Long Halloween was, was even better, so. So for me, um, so for great stuff. for me, I haven't read a ton of Batman stories. I've read some Nightfall and some of that stuff, but the the one I have had, and I don't know why I had it, but I've had it since I was a little kid. Was I had the Killing Joke, and I I love the Killing Joke. That's my favorite Batman story, but I haven't read a lot. So where to hush and long wall, long Halloween fall within Killing Joke ratio? Um, hush is below. Like Long Halloween is my favorite. Oh, okay, awesome. Just, I love the feel of it, so. I mean, maybe it's not the best story, but, you know, some stuff just hits you and you just, just enjoy it. And I always, I, I, I don't, don't want to ruin anything for you, but I'll just say it like Long Halloween is my favorite. And so, nice. um, but, and, and Hush is very, very good. Um, I like, I'm a sucker for Jim Lee art too, growing up an X-Men yeah. kid. Yeah. So, um, lots, you're going to have lots of good times. I can't, I'm excited for you because, you know, like we kind of flip normally do you grew up a marvel kid i grew up a dc kid and then it kind of flip-flops so this is yep. now you're in my wheelhouse um jeff john's run on wally west flash you got it you got it I, i'm not expecting you to jump right into it but you're gonna have to just devote your time to that because that was it's what made me fall in love with the character so. i'm a i'm a big jeff john's guy because he spent a lot of time with green lantern who are green lantern core all those green lanterns are my thing when it comes to dc so he wrote sinestro corp war which i just love to death he wrote blackest night which is good but not quite as good as sinestro corp war and i'm five volume there's eight volumes i'm five volumes into after they did dc rebirth not green lantern rebirth but dc uh rebirth uh green lantern core which is jessica cruz and simon boz and i absolutely love it to death and then once once i finish that i can switch over to uh, Hal Jordan and the Green Lantern Corps because uh, Cruz and Boz is happening on Earth while Hal Jordan and the Green Lantern Corps is happening out in deep space, but, space, but they run parallel to each other. So I'm just, I'm having a blast with that right now. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, speaking of awesome, let's get to Grandma Lucy's favorite game show. It's Am I Right or Am I Wrong? In true American style, our contestant is going to offer up his earnest opinions, which will either be taken as fact we're immediately mocked by our moderator. Here's how the one-player version of our game works. Seven questions. The player wins if he gets four, kind of. Um, singles match tonight. Luke, you're doing the asking. I'm doing the answering. I'm going to turn it over to you. All right. Well, it's kind of fitting that we started out with a giant long DC intro because... Guess where we're going with our first question. We are going to DC. We're going to DC movies, but I'm going to throw you a curveball. Not related to Aquaman. As much oh. as I wanted to find a way to relate it to Aquaman, which I have now seen three times, I have not found a way to weave this in. But there is some other interesting DC news. It doesn't have to do with Aquaman. doesn't have to do with Wonder Woman. doesn't have to do with James Gunn. It has to do with Zack Snyder. Because he recently did some fan screenings, some fan Q&As, and he spoke in depth about Batman v Superman, and specifically about some of the controversial movie moments in there. The most controversial of all, you actually already made a reference to it, the Why Did You Say That Name? segment of Batman v Superman, because I, like a lot of people, found that move, that, that moment insanely laughable, and what I think they thought was a very clever and very, very serious moment when really it was over the top ridiculous. But when describing the thought process of creating that scene with his co-writer and I believe Academy Award winner for Argo, Chris Terrio, he said, and I quote, we sort of just were throwing down on their humanity and Batman realizing Superman has humanity. He's not just a creature. He's a man. He's an alien. But he's as human, and in a lot of ways, more human than him, right? He's sort of embraced all the good parts of the human race. And so Batman's able to sort of see, in a lot of ways, a thing that he is not. And I think that's how we started to talk about it. Well, you can put any spin on it you want. It's one of the worst moments in modern comic book history for me. Probably close to uh, emo Spider-Man 
throwing finger guns and dancing. So we're gonna we're gonna throw the Spider-Man example out. We're gonna talk about the modern era of comic book movies, which I'm gonna count as 2009 when Iron Man debuted. What is the worst moment in comic book movies since Iron Man came out in 2009? Aside from Batman v Superman. Aside from what happened to Batman v Superman. Can I just take a quick moment to say that our conversation about that moment after I watched Batman v Superman was, yeah, that was awful. But the ex- and, and I'm a little depressed because you don't remember this, but his explanation was my explanation as to what he was going for. It was almost exactly what he said was my thought and my belief to you of what he was trying to do so i'm gonna toot my own horn because i could see what he was trying to do but and and in a lot of ways like you kind of mocked it about superman being more human than batman you know my my, you know you know i i think there's a lot to latch on to what you're saying too but i think you've described the fundamental problem i have with zach snyder as a filmmaker yeah. Really good at maybe some concepts, really, really good at visuals. Like in my my estimation, elite in visuals, really bad at story execution. And I think this is yeah. an example of something that maybe worked on paper that he doesn't have the talent to pull off in live action. Yep. And and I think and that's what kind of makes me sad because I actually think that there's a point there that could have been made that could have been pulled off and really actually pulled the, that movie together in a lot of ways. It could have been a very powerful moment, but the execution was just bad. Mm-hmm. So um, that can't be my answer, even though I want to just give that answer again, even though I wouldn't get points for it because it's that bad. But for me, the moment when Black Widow like reaches onto the Hulk's hand and is like, it's getting pretty low. The sun's getting pretty low. And like, She's all of a sudden in Age of Ultron, the reason that he can like calm down and that it just opens it up to this whole love story that we never saw coming. And then it was completely dropped by Marvel after that. For me, that was the most like, what the hell's going on here? Sort of moment. Um, I'm sure that, that, that there's another one out there that you're about to tell me, but that was for me, that was the most like moment. Interesting, interesting. I did not predict you guessing that. Unfortunately, you're not going to get the correct answer on this one. The correct answer is anything that happened in the Ryan Reynolds Green Lantern movie. of Because that movie is atrocious. I actually, being, being a big Green Lantern fan, but also being someone who can watch different takes on characters I love and be open to them. I tried to re-watch that movie about two weeks ago. It is so atrocious. I couldn't even finish it. Like it's, it's the worst in like every conceivable way. And Martin Campbell's a good director. So I'm, I'm kind of surprised at how bad that was. And I, you know, the thing for me is, is like on the, the Scarlet witch or not Scarlet witch on the black widow, Scarlet Johansson uh, Hulk thing is, is I'm okay with that. Like I'm okay with that relationship, even though it's something that Joss Whedon kind of created. And I actually think they've done okay with managing it, even though their, their flirting scene, I think at the party is way worse pulled off than the, Hey, we found a method to calm Hulk down, um, which kind of makes some sense to me. And I also like the fact that introducing Scarlett Johansson is kind of a like, yeah, Liv Tyler is dead in this universe, like super dead in this universe. So I'm, I'm, I'm cool with that. And I do kind of like how they, I thought there was a little bit of emotional impact in the 15 seconds in infinity war where they finally re meet after being separated for a few years. Like I thought there was some, some good, good impact to that, that little moment where he kind of like acknowledges, yeah, I'm, I'm back or whatever. And you know, you can, but they're good actors, and I feel they pulled it off well. So I, I'm, I can't award you a point on that because that one does not bother me. But uh, you know, we'll we'll have to see how it plays out too because I think they could really s- scrap the the landing on this whole storyline in the next movie. Though you got to give the the Russo brothers have to fail before I'm not going to give them the benefit of the doubt. So yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna respectfully disagree with you on that moment in Infinity War. Like I s- scoffed openly. At oh point. yes, but in my defense. You also came out of that movie going, it didn't make any sense. Why didn't they describe what Thanos' plan was or his motivations in it? 
Granted, you were deliriously like tired and didn't it comprehend was what three happened. In the morning, man, I was so <laughs> tired. That is that is going to go down actually as one of the weirdest conversations I ever had with you, and maybe the most memorable because I was so dumbfounded when you were telling me how much you hated the movie that I didn't even I couldn't even come up with words to come out. And then you went and resaw it and were like, "No, I actually really liked it." And I was like, "Okay, now I get this." But I remember leaving. I physically left the theater and went. I bet Maya thinks this is like the greatest movie that ever happened. And then we talked and you're like, I hated it. And I was like, what just happened? Yeah, it was a, uh, that was a surreal experience. And to our one long-term listener out there, uh, you'll recall like just the weirdness of that conversation and how that all went down. Uh, I was just delirious. It was a great movie. I love that movie. Yeah. Um, and rewatch it often, but uh, man, yeah, I was out of it. You know, and for how long it is, it is really rewatchable. Like yep. I watch it, I watch it a ton, and it never feels that long. Yep, I was gonna say the same thing. It does not. It it does. It carries really well. It carries quickly. It's exciting and and fun and and all the things that you want a movie like that. But it's also meaningful. Yeah, yeah. And you know what? I I don't I don't care for for my money. There's never been a better comic movie than comic book movie moment than Thor landing in Wakanda beating everyone's ass in that moment. That's fantastic. We will move to question two. Maya in a little bit of a hole, but it's early. It's only 01. We are going into my favorite genre in the whole world. We are going into horror because right now, Jordan Peele's new effort, Us, is tearing up the box office. It's in its second week. A movie that costs $20 million, and it's already at like $170 million worldwide or something like that. It's well made its, its money back. And it's not just a, a box office success, but it's a critical success. It's 94% on Rotten Tomatoes. Um, I saw this movie. It's not as good as Get Out. I'll tell you that right now. But it is a great watch that I'll recommend to anyone else. And this is Peel's second feature following his Oscar win for Get Out. And he's also launching a new version of The Twilight Zone on CBS All Access. So if you... Mr. Maya, were to give Jordan Peele, maybe the hottest director out there right now, the reins to a pop culture property, what would it be? That's a great question. Um, I I really don't know because it seems like for whatever reason, you know, he starts, I assume, and you even know his history better than I would, he starts in comedy and moves to horror. So I would kind of want him to do something completely different like just like com going from comedy to horror is completely different. So, you know, I think what, what one of my favorite properties out there in, in the whole world and what desperately needs a little revival, even with episode nine coming up is star Wars. And I would like him to do a political thriller because I think that's, what's missing in the star Wars universe. And I think that would be a little bit different and outside his wheelhouse and, he seems to be a guy that like really wants to throw his himself into different things. And whenever he's done with horror, I think he's going to do that again. And, and maybe a political thriller would be the, the way to go. For that. I, I'm going to ask for a little bit of elaboration here. I'm, I'm curious to what you want to see in a star Wars political thriller. Um, you know, I, I, I I'm not writing the movie. Um, sure. I would like, I would like to see basically whatever, whatever government structure comes out of episode nine. Okay. So post okay. post the trilogy. Yeah, the I would new like trilogy. to look for, you know, I'm assuming that, you know, the good guys are going to win and I'm assuming that there'll be some sort of system that arises. And I would like to see a movie with two leads that are both in the right for different reasons and kind of using spies and those sort of things sort of, um, to sort of back each other or to, to go after each other. Um, that's all really, I mean, you've given me 20 seconds to think about it. That's, that's what I'm saying. No, and, and honestly, I, I think you hit on what I was really looking for here. So you didn't pick the specific properties I picked. I didn't, I didn't think you would. So the first thing that popped to my mind is a total obscure wheelhouse just for me. But the, the thing about Jordan Peele is like his movies aren't just. The max. Exactly. His horror, his movies aren't horror movies for the sake of horror. They have things to say. They, they talk about social issues and things like that that are important to him. And that's, that's why I lean to one of my all time favorite comics, which is Sam Keith's image comic from the nineties, the max. It's a weird ass superhero movie, but it, it's saying a lot of things about the impact of trauma and how that affects people and how it affects their lives. So I feel like that's something he could delve into. The other thing I thought of, which is something I brought up on this show before in very similar questions, is him interpreting Alan Moore's Swamp Thing. Because Alan Moore's Swamp Thing is a marvel. It, might, it, it may be the best comics ever written. Um, and it has a lot to say about a lot of different things, depending on what issues 
you latch onto. I've never cared so much about tiny cartoon alligators that end up dying more so than in, in Alan Moore Swamp Thing thing. I think he could do a lot. What I was looking for out of that question was to hit him hitting, hitting deeper social meanings into whatever pop culture thing you, you picked. And you did that with Star Wars. I will take it. Point awarded. We are tied one to one. We are moving into question three. We are going to stick with movies. We're going to talk about a movie franchise we are both new to, but equally excited about, I believe, because there is a new trailer for John Wick 3. Now, this is a movie we both saw because your dad told us we had to see it. And Papa Madrid, exactly right. That movie is fucking awesome. Um, I saw the second one. It's I don't know if you... Have you seen the second one? I haven't seen the second one yet, no. It's, I was it's, hoping, actually, to, to have my dad come back and then watch the second one with him. So, so the, the second one isn't as good, but we knew it wasn't going to be, but it's yeah. still good. You'll have a great time. Uh, I can imagine you two watching it together. I'm very excited to see the third one, but this leads me to what is a movie that you didn't particularly have interest in, but really surprised you when you got around to seeing it and really loved. My favorite movie ever is the answer to this question for me. It's Office Space. And I know that can't possibly be the answer because I think we ruined Office Space and Dirty Work for you back in college. So, um, but but the true answer, and that's how I play this game, is Office Space. I didn't want to see that movie. It sounded super boring, but there was a girl that I was interested in and she wanted to come over and show me Office Space. And I was kind of like, yeah, whatever, not realizing it was Mike Judge. You know, it was, it was completely sort of underground. And it's my favorite movie. Like, I just watched that again recently. I makes me, like, every line in it makes me so happy. It is, to me, the perfect movie for me. It's Office Space. Well, once again, I didn't think you'd get the answer written on paper. Because I'm not, I think you did see this movie, but I think you saw it later in the game. So, for me, I'm a big Oscar guy. And I try, especially when I was in my 20s a while ago, I would try to see as many movies that were nominated for Oscars before the ceremonies as possible. The biggest surprise I ever saw was a movie that I thought the plot synopsis was the dumbest thing I'd ever heard of and went down and it's now one of my probably, it's definitely my top 10, maybe my top five favorite movies of all time. It is Children of Men, which is just a phenomenal, amazing movie. But I'm going to award you a point here because I'm in the same boat with you where I didn't really have much interest in Office Space. The trailer didn't appeal to me, wasn't interested. You and good friend of the show who won't listen to this, Mr. Garth, were like, no, you need to sit down and watch this. And it's it's fucking awesome. I still watch it today. It still holds up today. So that qualifies every single thing this question was looking for. It wasn't what I wrote down, but I definitely award you the point. I think that's a great, great answer. So we are what? Three questions in, and you are sitting at two points. That means you're two away from the win, depending on how many points I decide to award for a win. And we are going to switch gears a little because it is sports time. And I am now one of the biggest just basketball junkies around, apparently, because that's what my son's sport league has done to me. He loves basketball. It was so much fun to watch him. We filled out brackets. First time in my life I ever filled out a bracket. I have picked Texas Tech to win it all. All my other Final Four teams have been eliminated, but I still look semi-smart for having Texas Tech alive. I openly mocked you. You know what I mean? Like, you sent me that pick, and I was like, oh, that's so sweet of you. That's so nice that you picked Texas Tech. Now, I don't like college basketball. I'm a college football guy. Um, But I was kind of like – I feel like I know more college basketball than you. And so you picked that, and I was like, oh, I mean, not now. I mean, the look you just gave me was kind of funny, but I'd say, like, historically, I know a lot about college No, 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 no. Let's stop that right now. You 100% know more okay. about college basketball than I do. I went through and went, there's a three seed. I don't like Gonzaga. I'm making Texas Tech go through because why not? It wasn't based on me knowing a single player on their team. I still can't name a player on their team, and I've watched all their games in the tournament. <laughs> the, you know, the guy I can name the most is that, like, seven foot six taco from from florida central florida or whatever my son was so even though he picked duke to win the whole thing he was so disappointed when taco doesn't get to play anymore so no you know way more about it i also picked maryland because i like turtles to be in the final four um i picked i picked purdue which i'm not going to be ashamed about because man they made a good run at it and i picked north carolina so i feel like other than maryland i didn't embarrass myself totally but anyways 
getting us back to the question, my little guy had his birthday in the desperate effort to not have a 13 kid birthday party at my house or some other venue. I was able to talk him into getting nice box tickets for his birthday for him, me and a friend. We went there a week ago, Friday. We saw soon to be league MVP. Fuck you, James Harden, Giannis and his boys crush the heat. This game was awesome. It was also a farewell of sorts to Heat and Marquette legend Dwayne Wade. He made his final appearance in Milwaukee. It was a pretty awesome scene. They, I believe, intentionally didn't start him so they could sub him in at the first time out. The Bucks played a tribute video with all his Marquette highlights. Also, his number is retired at the Fiserv Forum because he was such a great Marquette player, and they play at the Fiserv even though they played at the Bradley Center when he was there. It was amazing. Whole game was awesome. Um, it made me love Dwayne Wade, someone I haven't given a thought about either way because it was cool to be swept up in that moment. And it made me think, like, there was a, a standing ovation, so 30,000, 25,000, whatever that stadium holds, Bucks fans on their feet for a guy who has never played a professional game in Milwaukee as a Buck. Who is a player that you absolutely love, even though he or she has never played for a team you particularly care about? When I went to a Baltimore Orioles game when I lived out east, it was the Baltimore Orioles versus the New York Yankees. And I was absolutely mesmerized by a player that I had never really given a lot of thought to, and that's Derek Jeter. In the first inning, Jeter had beat on a bunt. He stole second. He went to third on a... Uh, on a pass ball, and he scored on a sack fly. He went out and put and had three like outs or assists, and it was the most smooth that I. I mean, he's the most smooth athlete that I had ever seen. And he was. I mean, this was 2008, so he was further along, and I was kind of embarrassed that I never really noticed him. But watching him play in person, and not on the TV, but watching just the whole thing of what he was doing, I was mesmerized. I'm not a huge baseball guy. I mean, usually I watch baseball because. Um, Boom Madrid and Papa Madrid fight over the Brewers and the Cubs, and so I, which is awesome. Call. Yeah, they just like I, they, they, there was a phone call yesterday. Um, my my daughter's actually trying to trick him into talking smack because you can tell how big of a sports fan she's going to be because she believes that the karma of talking trash will lead to your team losing games, and she she was mad because I talked trash to him and the Cubs started losing. And so she wanted to trick him into talking to her. So, like, that's that's their baseball thing. And I'm just along for the ride, right? Mm-hmm. But I was so impressed by what Jeter did. Um, a close second would be Kevin Garnett. I saw him uh, play live. But for me, like, the, the, it was Jeter. I mean, and, I, and I, I cheered openly for the Timberwolves. I mean, I had Timberwolves jerseys and the Timberwolves starter jacket, which we all know is, like, the number one thing that you can do to say I like a team. So... Derek Jeter is, you know, a a baseball great. He's going to – I'm not sure if he's been done long enough to be in the Hall of Fame. If he's not in the Hall of Fame, he certainly will be. Man, you really picked a team that, like, you're just – Like, that was – man. And it has nothing to do with sports. It has to do with family and and broken relationships and things I can't get beyond. So it's really hard for me to award you a point on that. So I'm going to have to deny because you literally went to the one place you – since you are a Packer fan, you couldn't name a Packer. And you went to the one team that basically disqualified you in my eyes from picking it because I hate the Yankees with the fire of, you know, a million suns. The answer, I think, is going to actually really appeal to you that I had written on paper because this is a guy. It's It's what? It's Drew Brees. We saw that game together. It's Drew Brees. Oh. When he ripped ripped the Gophers on homecoming and ruined our homecoming. Like it's, I don't know why I didn't think of that. The answer well, should have been. And, and, and not, well, you know, and not only that, I went to Purdue and saw him play the Gophers at Purdue and score 50 points or whatever against us. The answer is not true, Breeze, because we're going to stick with the sport that I love, the sport I grew up playing, and a player that's probably more dear to you than he is to me, though I think I watched him play more than you did because you saw him more as a coach. This is a guy who mesmerized every time he touched the ball to an insane level. That for me, I've never experienced with any other soccer player. I've seen clips of Pele and Maradona. I've seen Messi and Ronaldo. Uh, But the man for me who was the greatest to ever touch the ball that I watched play games on TV, never saw him live other than a coach, 
with you. I saw him coaching the sidelines from Soldier Field with you. It is Zinedon Zidane. That man was a maestro of every sort. I, I don't care about France either way. I don't care about Italian soccer either way. I don't care about Spanish soccer either way. So the man never played in a league I really cared about. But God damn, watching him play was a fucking joy in every sense of the word. And I I can't dump enough compliments on him. I, as an Arsenal fan, since I was 17, which is, you know, God, 21 years ago, he was better to watch than Thierry Henry, and Thierry Henry is the fucking god of all things in my soccer world than Zidane is the man. I will tell you this. Like, to get serious for a moment, you know that since the, the additional allegations against Cristiano Ronaldo came out, I have been having a crisis of conscience about how much I cheered for Real Madrid, um, what that team means to me, and how much Cristiano Ronaldo is wrapped up into that. And I haven't really watched a game of Real Madrid since then. Well, fuck that, because Zizou is the man, and he's back as manager. I love that, dude. I will concede the point. You are right. I am wrong. <laughs> All right. So we are two to two. We are uh, four questions, three left. You need to pull two out of three here to get the win. We will see what you do. We're going to stick with basketball. This should be a topic that's a little familiar because we had this conversation offline just recently. Sticking with the Bucks, my son and I have been watching the Bucks a lot together. This weekend, the Bucks backups lost a thriller to the Hawks starters because the Bucks are that fucking good that they can play their nobodies and you still need overtime and a miracle finish to beat them. But that was what the Atlanta Hawks were able to pull off, a last-second win. But during this game, I had a major revel- revelation brought to me by my son. Because that Atlanta Hawks logo has been around for how many years? How many decades? It's older than I am. And I, for the life of me, have never once seen that there was a hawk head in there. I always looked at it as Pac-Man eating a pellet. And I openly wondered what it is my whole life. When I pointed out that out to my 9-year-old son... He went, Dad, it's a hawk's head. The the dot is his eye. And I all of a sudden realized I was looking at it from the wrong angle. I totally see the hawk's head. I feel like a complete fucking moron for not being able to see it for that many years. And my question for you, you are also a dad. Our kids are very similar ages. They're less than a year apart. What is something that your kid has pointed out to you that made you feel dumb as hell? It just what you just said reminded me of like a schooner is a sailboat dummy. Hundred <laughs> percent. The conversation we had, I didn't even know what to say back to him because he was so dumbfounded I couldn't see it, and I was so blown away that I finally saw it for the first time in almost forty years. A hawk! It's a hawk! It's totally a hawk's head. Yeah, I swear I to God, it, if you look at it going the other way, it's Pac Man, right, eating a dot. Yeah. Well, in the old, you know, that newer version that they have in the middle of their of their. Uh, their court looks a lot more like a hawk head. Like go look at the one from the eighties. It's slightly different. And you can see why so many people have been confused for me. The thing that, that uh, boom Madrid pointed out, um, we were talking and she, she said something about, um, about gravity. I was talking about gravity and I was trying to tell her about like why there is gravity. Right? Like relative gravity is because some objects are so much larger than the others and everything has its own gravity. And, and I learned that uh, when I was in high school. And so I was like, I was looking at a, an opportunity to teach her something. And I was like, honey, do you understand why there's gravity? And she was like, uh, yeah, it's because objects have so much mass. They all have their own gravity. And so objects with bigger mass have more gravity. And I was like, you're a damn second grader. I learned that as almost an adult, and it was really embarrassing. So I'm right there with you, bud. She she shocks me all the time. Well, we we pretty much plan this question as a free space because, you know, Boom is probably our biggest fan. She's been on the show a couple times. She's aired some questions and opinions, and they're generally smarter than the questions and opinions we come up with on our own. So you are going to get a point no matter what. That uh, But that is a great answer because, damn, that, that kid's going places. We are down to two questions. You have three points. That means you need one answer out of the next two. But we You've are gonna been in this situation so many times, and I have I've dropped the ball so many times. So you have, but I I have faith in you. 
Uh, though we are moving slightly out of your wheelhouse as of late because we are going with MLS. The season is off and running. And, of course, we have a new expansion team because we always do an MLS. And this year it is FC Cincinnati German Clubber Housing, whatever they want to name themselves. And they have seven points in four games or five games now because they lost this, this last weekend. But they're off to a pretty damn good start and they get like 30,000 fans a game, even when they were a USL team. So it's a pretty impressive market. And who would have thought Cincinnati of all places was going to do that. Now the league currently sits at 24 teams. It's poised to be at 27 because we have announced Austin FC, everyone's least favorite team from now on. We also have Miami international Miami FC playing in Fort Lauderdale or whatever Beckham's FC soccer club. That will be coming, and we also have a Nashville SC. So no league's going to stay at an odd number. Those three teams are going to bring us to 27. That means we need to announce another expansion city in North America to be part of this league. My Madrid, who is going to be the 28th market in MLS? So you're not telling me that I need to come up with the – one that I think should be. This is just who will be. You will answer the question however you want. Okay. Um, so I'm just looking at all the teams here. I got 12 in the East, 12 in the West. So we're looking, is it a Western Conference team? Do you think? Um, I think all that stuff's relatively fluid, yeah, right? What do you think? Because the answer is one, it's going to be a team right in the middle of the country. It doesn't matter if they're East. It doesn't matter if they're West. It doesn't matter what you think. It should be St. Louis. St. Louis is the team that should have gotten the team for so long, and it's bullcrap that they don't. St. Louis. Holy shit, I just got steamrolled with a Stanley Tucci rule in the process. The answer written down was St. Louis, and I feel like I should be meekly saying this into the mic because, man, you just bitch slapped me back and forth for the win because we are coasting into question seven. You've already got four points. This is the bonus just to run up the score, and uh, we're going to bring it back to, to comic books because that's probably where our friendship started. And the Disney Fox merger is official. So yada yada X Men, yada yada Fantastic Four, yada yada MCU. Who gives a shit? They'll throw something together. Blah 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 blah. What's the best all time X Men costume? What person had the best all time best X Men costume? That's a tough one uh, because there are so many bland costume choice. I feel like their costumes are cool because they are so bland. Like, I think about the animated series and, like, Jean Grey, and that's just like, oh, the blandest one possible. Um, that's difficult. Who's got the best costume? And here's the thing. You've already won, so you don't need to kiss ass for points. You just gotta go right. with what your heart says. Just one, one, one that I like? Yep. What do you um, like? You know what? I, I'll just tell you my favorite, then. My favorite would be Gambit. But recently, there has been a lot of movement. Um, Gambit's one of my favorite dudes. Cyclops one of my favorite dudes. But I, in reading the older comics from when Claremont took over, there has been a new chosen one, a new character whom I love everything about, from where he was from to what his attitude is to all the different things, and that is Peter Rasputin. I love Colossus. I'm going to go with Colossus. I know that there's those weird gaps there. Like in his underarm area. I don't care. He looks cool as hell. He's a big, like seven foot tall, eight foot tall silver dude. And he's a total badass. So I'm going to go Colossus. So it, it's not a horrible answer, but the majority of the reason he looks cool is because of his power and what his skin looks like when he's in his mutant thing. The actual answer is your boy, your guy, the one you love the most. It is Cyclops when he has those weird ass X's over his eyes. It doesn't matter that functionally it makes zero sense, but the X over his eyes is the coolest fucking costume that the X-Men have ever come up with by leaps and bounds. I love it. No one ever explained it to me. Just shoot your fucking beams through that X and it'll look badass forever. So I award you no point, but you, I award you the win. Congratulations, my friend. Thank you. Play the song. All right. So that's it for now. Hey, where can the, the, the kids out there, all the kids who, who wait for your every word, where can they find you? <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, both of our listeners can find me at Luke underscore Neitzel, N-E-I-T-Z-E-L. And our guy that we think still exists, but apparently shaved his beard off, is Mark something Neitzel 23. I don't know. Underscore Neitzel 23. Go with that. I'm at Maya Madrid together. We are at Kids Seriously, and we are out.